So I wanted to talk about these um, main mainframes that Tektronix has. This one is a TM502A. The two means two slots, and the 503 would be a three slot. Uh, what does it mean to be a slot? Okay, well, there's a, a place to put in plugins. So let me zoom out a bit here. So if you have some type of, of the standard plugins, uh, they will go in uh, a single wide or dual double wide. So these are single wide. So you could put two of them in here. So that's why it says that's why it says 502. All right. So let's kind of take a look at the design of this thing and see if uh, see if it makes any sense. So this is what's inside that mainframe. The mainframe is just hollow except for the power supply. And so we'll take a look at this power supply a little bit. Um, so it has two edge connectors, and so the uh, uh, module, the plug-in module you put in, is going to make connections to it. All right. So let's uh, let's take a look at what Tektronix was thinking about this system and why they built it the way they built it. Okay. So we're going to take a look at the uh, schematics here. Uh, so the AC comes in into a big transformer. And this is a pretty special transformer. They, they had to pay a special uh, custom for this one. So you can see that the input is wired for 100 volt, 120, 220, and 240. And the output has one winding here, winding here, winding, 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 winding. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight different windings on the output. And uh, so the schematic, uh, these are the two edge connectors, okay? so one edge connector and the other edge connector. And um, this is going to be the power supply section, okay? So we can see right away that uh, these two windings come and they wire into that edge connector, okay? And so they don't do anything at all. There's no circuitry in here. So whatever AC volts here comes out here. And so it's actually pin 13 to pin 13 from the A side to the B side. So um, 13 is going to be right across from one another in the edge connector, okay? And so one side will be one part of the AC and the other side will be the other part of the AC, okay? So we'll, we'll measure that and we'll, we'll see what that is. It's marked here as 25 volts AC and there is a little uh, 0.8 microfarad capacitor across that AC uh, just to quiet it down a bit, I guess. And then there's another one. Well, we, we have one. Why do we need two? Well, you see that this winding is connected to this edge connector, and this winding is connected to this edge connector. Pin 13 here, it's also pin 13 here. So when you plug in a card, 13 to 13, this is like A13 and B13, that's expected to have an AC across it. And over here in this card, it also has AC connected to it, but it has its own one. So the AC that's connected to this board is completely separate than the AC that's connected to this board. So each board has its own AC, all right? So you could put a, a transformer on your plug-in and pull off uh, one of these, uh, you, you get one, right? You get 25 volts AC, and over here you get 25 volts AC on this card. But if we look way down at the bottom, there's also a winding here and a winding here, and guess what? They come into pin one. So A1 and B1 and A1 and B1, they also have a 25 volt AC. So each card has two 25 volt AC windings, okay? So they're, and they're completely separate. There's no, no grounds connected, no, no nothing connected. So they're completely floating. So that's nice in analog systems to have uh, floating power supplies if you, if you want to make uh, measurements and not have ground loops and stuff. That's, that's kind of a nice design. So they were, they were thinking there and each card gets its own one. Okay. So those are kind of the weird things in this, in this power supply. The top power supply here is just a bridge rectifier. So there's a center tapped uh, winding over here and you get a plus and you get a minus and you get a ground. All right. The ground is here on the center tap. The ground goes to both earth ground and signal ground. So you have to remember that when you're designing these cards that uh, in this particular supply, it is connected to earth ground. All right. And it ends up being plus 33 and a half and minus 33 and a half. So those are pretty healthy voltages. Those are pretty big voltages. And if you want to regulate them down to say plus and minus 15, you're going to be throwing away a lot of power. Okay. Um, 
and back then they didn't use switchers. Everything was linear back then. So yeah, that was a lot of power to, uh, to throw away. So maybe you could use one of those little windings to generate your, um, I don't know, it's up to you, right? Um, but just be aware that plus or minus 33 is uh, quite a bit to have to throw away. Okay, we're going to ignore these little transistors here for right now. We'll go down to the next one. There's also another supply down here that's only a single supply, okay? It's also center tap, but it's only plus voltages. And you get uh, plus 11 and a half, okay? So this plus 11 and a half could be regulated down to a nice five volts, but again, you're gonna be throwing away a lot of power. So be aware of that. These things were kind of power hungry back in the day. They also allow the user of the cards to have this plus and minus, this uh, AC voltage as well. So they bring out the rectified DC, but they also bring out this AC. Not quite sure why, but you get 17 and a half volts AC on pins five, okay? And those are common between the two cards. Okay, so that the, the, this DC supply over here is common and this DC supply down here is common on both cards and, and the same, same signals on both cards. Okay, so what are, these, what are these funny transistors here and what are they doing? Well, let's take a look at this one. The middle base collector goes to pins 10, 11, and 11. So uh, A10 and A11. So A10 is the em emitter of a PNP. 11 is the base and 11B is the collector. And then if we move over to this card, it's the same thing. We have a PNP transistor and it's on 10, 11, 11. So we have these, these, these transistors that do nothing except just sit there, all right? And then we have another one down here, which are NPN. So these are PNP, these are NPN. So you can make a, a push-pull stage, okay? So why do they have these transistors? What, what are they doing in the power supply if they're not hooked to anything? Well. If you have a card and you have a very high power situation, you want to have a high powered a transistor on a good heat sink. And so what they did was they said, okay, we've got this big, big hunk thing of that back here. We're going to put some transistors in here. We're going to use these big heat sinks. And so if any power is being dissipated, we'll have it back here and this can get hot back here and the, and the card won't get hot. Now, while that might sound somewhat good in theory, and I'll show you one of those transistors. Okay, I'll zoom down here so you can see what I'm saying. So here's one of those transistors. It's, uh, it's a pretty big package. It's bigger than a TO220 package. It's a, well, maybe, it, no, maybe it's TO220, TO220 pack. It has a little, uh, a little guard around it, I guess. So it's TO220 and, uh, so one of the good things is it's, it's mounted on a nice heat sink and it has a, a heat spreader and everything on it. One of the bad things is it has a connector. It's not a soldered connection. It's an actual um, connector that pushes onto the leads of the, of the transistor. So in a high powered application, do you really want to have a, um, a connector or do you want to have that soldered? So that's one design choice that they made. The other design choice that I, I mean, that one's, I've seen that in other, other situations and stuff, um, and it can be okay. Um, I mean, they can rattle loose and stuff, and eh, I don't know. It's up to you. But the thing that I really don't like about the, uh, the tech design is, let's put one of these, um, let's put one of these plugins in here, okay? And then let me zoom way out again. All right, so this is kind of a uh, x-ray view of what's going on, right? The power supply is gonna be in the back. There'll be the, uh, you know, there'll be this nice cage over it when it's all put together, but this is kind of the, what the, the raw insides is gonna look like. And imagine what you're doing here. This is a power supply module, right? So your, your power supply output is here and you need high current transistors to drive the output. Okay, so your output is here. Well, where are your high drive transistors? Well, they're way back here. So you're gonna have your uh, op amps and stuff regulating the voltages, then it's gonna send that high current all the way to the back, and then that high current all the way to the front. Now you can have sense leads and stuff to take care of that, but think about it. You've gotta run high current all the way back and high current all the way back forward. It'll pick up noise in the, in, in the process and stuff. So anyway, I sort of, Sort of don't like that. Um, so that's one of the negative aspects about this Tektronix design. 
uh, having those pass transistors back here. Yeah, you can put your own pass transistors in the plug-in, but then the plug-in doesn't have good heat sinking. Uh, it has a little bit of heat sinking, but maybe not as good as the back. That could be debated, but probably not as good as the back. Maybe you could put a big heat sink in here, but then there's no airflow. Um, there is no airflow anywhere actually in this thing other than convection. There's no fans or anything. So anyway, there you go. That's, that's, my, that's my one gripe about a gripe, gripe about the system. Um, and that high current is going through an edge connector and going through that connector on the uh, on the two on the two transistors. So uh, I don't know. I'm not quite sure about this design. Um, all right, let's go ahead and measure some voltages and see if it is what it is. All right, so I have the uh, power supply on, have, have a voltmeter out here, we can measure the AC. So from pin one to pin one, pin one from A1 to a, uh, B1, we have 25, we have 25 AC volts. And on this card down here, we have 25 AC volts. Okay, so our AC, AC volts is there. It's 25 volts, it's marked uh, 25 volts on the schematic, so everything's looking good there. Um, now the next, uh, the next power supply is on, let's see, pin three is common and pin two is 11 and a half, but it's DC, so we'll go here, we'll go pin two is common and pin three. And we have minus, oh, I have my pin three and pin Oh, pin two, I see. Pin three is ground, pin two is plus. All right. And we have 11.6 volts. So uh, it says 11.5. I don't know what the tolerance is on these things, but these are kind of unregulated supplies. You're gonna regulate them down on your, uh, on your plug-in. So yeah, so 11 and a half volts on this one. And then the uh, plus and minus 33, let's see here, common is pin nine. Ominous pin nine, and then uh, pin eight is going to be minus 32.9, and the plus side is going to be 32.99. Okay, so that's looking good too. So anyway, that's how these things work. Um, You have AC available, you have floating grounds available, you have DC available, you have some high current PNP and NPN. Um, so yeah, lots of flexibility. Um, it comes at the cost of some design trade-offs like having, having to send high current all the way back down into this thing. Um, there is one funny thing that I noticed that you should be aware of that kind of caught me off guard. Let me show you that. So I said that the grounds floated except for the digital ones, which were tied together. Uh, they're tied together in a funny way though. So the, the plus or minus 33 volts is tied to ground right, right here. Uh, ground and earth ground, signal ground and earth ground are tied right here at the chassis. But the 11 volt supply, the common on that is also tied to earth ground, but through a 1K resistor. Okay, so it's, it's referenced to earth ground through a 1K resistor, and the other one is earth ground and signal ground are both the same. So the two DC supplies are ground referenced through a 1K resistor. Uh, so don't try to pull DC current between the two. Um, you're gonna run into that 1K. Anyway, just be, be aware of it, right? You could always tie them together inside your plug-in if you wanted to, but externally they're tied together with a 1K resistor so they don't, they don't float uh, over to nowhere. They're, they're tied at least to some place. All right, so I promised I'd show you the insides here. So um, we have the two edge connectors and there's a PC board in here. Um, there's the two transistors here, and on this side, the two transistors are on, on this. Um, one thing I didn't mention is think about, this is a two, a two slot, 
but there are three slot, there are up to six slot devices. Well, if you go up to six slots, that means you're, you're increasing the number of, of transistors that you have in there. So a six slot mother uh, 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 chassis will have lots of transistors in it. And think about the uh, floating, um, the floating AC windings on this transformer, okay? This one had uh, two windings for each card, so four windings. When you go to a three chassis, you have to have six. When you go to a six winding, you have to have 12, right? So the, the transformers get giant on those big ones, other than maybe they have to add a second transformer to do just the AC part. I'm not sure how the, the, um, the six slot wide one does. But anyway, what you see inside is, like I said, uh, the uh, two edge connectors, the transistors, uh, the big uh, transformer, and then what's hard to see are the diodes that do the rectification. They're actually way inside here. It's hard to, hard to see them, but the, 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 the big uh, rectifier diodes are down in there. And then the, uh, uh, the different capacitors are up on top. Now, those capacitors are pretty healthy. Uh, let me read you off what those, uh, uh, what those capacitors are. On the plus and minus 33, there are 4,700 microfarads. But on the plus and minus, I mean, on the plus 11 and a half, it's only one plus. Plus 11 and a half, it's actually 18,000 microfarads. So, yeah, I have one uh, pretty healthy one there on the, uh, the 11.5. So it's going to be real smooth. Okay, there you go. That's a quick look at the Tektronix TM502A uh, two-wide uh, power supply and uh, what's, uh, what's down inside of it.